Nothing's. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela Mills, and I work for the town of Amherst. Uh, this is a meeting of the subcommittee, um, one of the subcommittees for the Conservation Commission. And this meeting is being recorded and will be uploaded by the end of this week to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. At this time, I would like to acknowledge that this meeting is being recorded and um, it is by an act of Governor Healy that there's further suspension of certain parts of the open meeting laws that allows this wonderful subcommittee meeting to take place virtually. So at this time, I will turn the meeting over to Alex and make you the host. And I wish you a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks, Angela. Thank you so much. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. So this is a subcommittee meeting of the Conservation Commission. Our agenda was published. We're going to talk about dogs today, and we have Bruce Stedman present, and Michelle Lab, and myself, Alex Hoare, and that is the entirety of this subcommittee. And I right now see no members of the public present. So um, I want to thank both of you for the um, documents that you sent me. And Michelle, I just read yours this morning. So thank you for, um, for the updated language in the little um, spiel. And also, um, I think you added a word or two to the policy itself. And then in the... For both of you, um, the list, the 12 ideas for um, advancing education and management of dogs and dog owners, <clears throat> Dave provided that at the end of our last meeting, and I purposely didn't provide it to you because I didn't want to lead the witness. But what I was hoping you'd do is rank them high, medium, and low by your own criteria in terms of uh your sense of uh, um, uh, success in implementing them so um bruce for example you you said education and whatnot and for high but continuing an existing continuing activity is low and that didn't quite work because it doesn't tell me what you think are the high, highest and the ones to advance to the commission and Michelle, I don't think you sorted them at all. You did yeah, a nice job. Sorry. You did a nice job. <laughs> I'm, just, of, I'm of trying amending. to find my the thing I sent, but I'm not finding it just a minute. <clears throat> but so yeah. As you pointed out, um, you're right that my uh, notion of what constituted a high and low and medium wasn't as precise as it could have been. Yeah, so what I'm hoping to do is, um, and if you do me a favor and not share, just send it to me. Don't share sure. it with, uh, with Michelle so that we get her independent point of view. Um, okay. What you shared so far won't influence her. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, and same with Michelle. And then what I'll do is I'll somehow blend them so that you okay. can see that how you and I, Aaron, I haven't gotten anything from Aaron, but I did get a sort from Dave Zomack. And uh, he did that, I think, as I commented immediately after the last meeting. So um, I, I, rather than spend your time trying to uh, work that out in this phone call, I'd rather you do it on your own and send it to okay. me and we can give some time back. <laughs> I will revise and give more precise um, meaning to high, medium, and low. Yeah, maybe I, wasn't, I obviously wasn't very clear. So my no, I, I wasn't either. I, 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 when I look at it now, I think, well, why did I use that? And I, I, largely, I was I was thinking of it. And what are we adding that's new? And I realized that's not what you meant. So that's why the continuing on with things was low priority for our work. Because I felt like, well, you just continue the things on. But I see that I didn't grasp it the way you had intended. Yeah, just yeah. so for example, um, just to pick on Michelle, uh, you might look at Michelle, what Michelle wrote and say, 
that's a high probability that we could implement it with some success. And so it might go in your high group. Right. And just a oh. note on that. Um, so Bruce, what I sent today had minimal comments, but just clarified a previous suggestion I made about um, dog license thing. So okay. check that out maybe. I will, I'll send mine back after we're done here. I hope Michelle feels sufficiently picked on by using her as an example. No problem. <laughs> And I'm I'm on a delightful island in Maine with no cars and family. They're off at the we have a library and tennis courts and a chapel and do nice beaches and I've departed them for this call. Um, I'm happy to talk more about dogs um, uh, if you have things to say. But I um, um, and I oh, I'd like to clarify the text and because Bruce said, well, how do you intend to use it? But I, uh, I'll open it up to you guys first before I do that. I, I was actually going to follow up with that, too, because I had the same question. So, I, yeah, is it a preamble to some sort of standalone policy on dogs? Yeah, I, I keep asking myself, well, how is this document going to be used? And um, we found that Aaron, in some cases, had the idea of sort of taking a particular section out and posting it on the web. And um, so I thought, well, maybe this dog policy, because of where we're going, needs to have a standalone document that can be ripped out of the, the broader policy. So that's why I just sat down and uh, stream of consciousness wrote that after our June 20, some, some previous meeting. So that's kind of where that was headed. Yes, a standalone document and maybe it's i don't i don't i don't know where it's going to go but that's well, that at, at some answer. level it's probably more needed as a standalone thing than a number of the other sections because of its uh controversial or tension creating uh circumstance whereas something like uh, i don't know agriculture you could just leave it in in the big picture provide the, the forms over here on the side and so I can see its purpose in terms of really trying to get out there, especially because a lot of the things on the list were about education. And so what's the context for doing educational things? Yeah, I'm not, the, the list that's at the bottom of it was raw. It was my, my attempt at that time to make sure I didn't forget things that were mentioned during the meeting. So um, it's kind of just, stuck there i wasn't i wasn't trying to come up with a final draft yeah i'm just trying, trying to get some ideas on paper in yeah. memory so um and i don't quite know what this is going to look like when it goes back to the commission um and maybe we could maybe we could talk about that in a little bit of time um because we're making, a, I think we're going to make some suggestions from an administrative, uh, trying to stay in our policy role, but still recommending some administrative strategies for the town to take up. And um, that, if that's where we're headed, then that will shape that standalone document or what goes back to the commission. What are your feelings? Um, I think a standalone document is good. I mean, I'm, is that what you're asking? Like to shape this into something that's like hopefully not more than two pages, but um, I agree that it warrants it's sort of its own spotlight um, given that it's, I was, yeah. I was thinking a one pager if it needs to be yeah. posted somewhere. I agree. One page is great. I'm just, we have like three working documents right now. So I was trying to mentally compress them. <laughs> but yeah. One page would be, would be great. Um, and then maybe if, well, when we give it to the commission, we could have sort of a background document. So policy document and then background document with some of our rationale or other ideas that were, I don't know, yeah. did or something. Yeah. Cause the existing policy is fairly raw. 
and it doesn't express any context. It's just a bunch of do's and don'ts. And um, I, I didn't think it was user friendly. So I'm trying to think of how to how to create that standalone document that could could work well with with some of the administrative ideas like working with other departments and posting on the website and so on. Yeah, and as you're talking about this, I'm realizing that there's probably some confluence there with um, the open space goals and actions, right? So maybe some of these can be, if, if they don't seem to be appropriate necessarily for this policy, one pager can be moved into that, which Aaron has been circulating um, because obviously dogs came up for that one too. And so she must have it. I haven't reviewed it recently, but she must have some action items in there that some of these ideas would be well suited for. Yeah, she being Aaron. Yeah, sorry. So when, when I look at the at the list of some of the issues raised involved, there are there are clumps. So you could say that human safety, owners failing to control, unwelcome contact, knocking children down, uh, dogs biting people. I think that's all of them that are that are really all of a piece. So the question yeah. is, well, what's the policy? And then how does the staff, if we want to make recommendations on how the staff supports or addresses the question of owners failing to control, then we could do that. But isn't that their job to figure out how to do that? And that's, I, why I said, that's why I said trying to stay within our policy realm. Let me add something. Something. Let me add something, which I think is relevant to some of the other sections too which is, yes, at some level, we could just make a policy and say, go figure it out. But that isn't the tendency of this group. <laughs> if you take the, the whole meeting as a whole, there's a lot of strong impulse to make pretty directed um, recommendations or suggestions. Um, and so the tendency will be for this set of things to do the same thing. Well, Yes, we have Dave, Z Dave Zomack functioning as a committee member, which he's not. And But the way Dave works is he wants something to come out of it that he can use. So I think it's to Dave's advantage. And he's, I mean, he was the first to give me his high, medium, and low. He wants something that he can point to saying, uh, okay, here's why I'm doing this. But isn't the outcome of that that the staff gets more done? Yeah. Yeah, but so, I mean, if he goes to Paul and Paul says, why are you doing this? He can point to it. Or somebody else come to him, why are you doing this? Yeah. Like, for example, if he goes to the town clerk and says, we'd like to implement this checkoff, which Michelle wrote, uh, and they may say, well, why are we doing this? And you can point to this document and say, because it was recommended. It's not Dave. And I think that's what Dave's looking for. Is it's not Dave asking for it. It's Dave implementing what was asked for. Um, can can we have like the policy for our policy documents and then separate from that, some recommendations like that don't get published in the actual policy document? We can shape this any way we want. That's kind of what we're talking about. Is yeah, we're, well, how do we split? How do we split this up and get it done? I mean, I don't think they all have to go into the land use policy. That should probably just be high level policy. But we can certainly develop some recommended action items, like per this subcommittee. I agree with that, and I, I think I was sort of trying. I didn't do it as extensively as Michelle, but trying to keep it in my mind, what's the policy here? And then, so, yeah, I think if we can separate the two and say, this is our intention, here are some suggestions on how to address it. Yeah. And, and again, I, I feel like another avenue or another place for those to go is the open space plan because it, I don't know how specific it gets, but if we have something 
that um, we feel better would be better suited for the staff to figure out how they want to address it or enforce it or implement it, then we could, you know, move it over into that document. Um, right. I don't know. Yeah. So when you do your high, medium, and low, if you um, do me a favor and don't don't create a special category, you know, just high, medium, and low. And high being things that can you think would have a high probability of success if implemented, and which is the way Dave did it, and um, maybe put something in parentheses uh, if you think it would go to open space. Uh, um, you know, just put a parentheses there. And let us know. And I we're going to have to talk about this again. Uh, I'm a little concerned okay. about. Uh, how how you were not moving very fast. Then this will be the third meeting yeah. on dog. It's a big issue, and I think we're headed in a nice direction. Um, there's one other item that I sent to you, and that is a summary of Massachusetts dog laws. And I got that off. I think that I got that off of uh, um, the attorney general's uh, website when I was searching for dog laws in Massachusetts. And the very first item has to do with on leash, off leash, and there is an exception. So we had asked, is it against the law to allow dogs off leash? And we didn't have an answer at the time. Well, that document in the first item gives you an answer and it is not illegal to permit dogs off leash. There is a provision in the law for towns to designate certain areas, uh, certain times under its own rule. So Mill River Park and Amethyst Brook or any other area you want to designate is legal. Thanks for coming. Sorry, go ahead. I was just saying thanks for finding, pulling that up. Yeah, uh, are there places in town where it is Ill illegal for a dog to be even when they're on the leash, other than inside the mill. You mean, like, where, is it, are there places where dogs are forbidden, period? Yeah, like in, in the river, for example, in a river, in a stream. I hope not. Well, I hope not too, I'm just curious because we're talking about legalities and. I think they're forbidden from the beaches at the beaches at Buffers Pond. Right. Okay. I don't I don't think somebody can bring their dog to the beach on a leash. Right. Can we go back to the, the H? Sorry. You were gonna I'm just gonna shift. Go ahead. Oh, uh, just obviously in buildings. I'm trying to think if there's probably if there's any sort of drinking water supply area, but I think those are mostly, the above ground is mostly in Shootsbury and Pelham. So right. I'm not sure if Amherst has a reservoir. <laughs> they get We get what they give us. Um, can we go back to the, the high, medium, and low just for a second? Yeah. So you said for high, likely to be successful, should, and then parentheses, should it be go to the OSRP? But did you have a notion about what me, medium and low would mean? Based in part on what how Dave did it. Nice idea. Nice idea. I don't think it's as implemental, implementable or would be complex. You know, that sort of got a medium. And something that is is kind of out of the question in your mind in terms of in, being implemented, that would be low. Okay. <clears throat> And then words, I, I, I think the low items will probably get dropped. Well, there's a lot of items too, and you can only do so, so many at a time. Um, can you, can one of you or both say your sense of the difference between the land use policy and the OSRP? Because you're saying we'll send some things over to this this 
Well, um, I mean, I can give my like very off the cuff response, but so the policy would be our concrete policy and, but not necessarily with objectives or, or action items. And so okay. that, that's what I was thinking of as Aaron sent out the fleshed out objectives and action items that sort of what staff has developed to address issues that were raised in the open space plan or goals for the open space plan. And so I think anything that's not easily or quickly implementable, but maybe is more long-term or will take yeah. more time, we could move over to that um, while Aaron is still working on it, hopefully. So there's probably some time sensitivity there too. The one thing that occurred to me is that a number of things in the OSRP are there because they need money. The only way to get the money is if you have an OSRP. It's kind of a circular thing. So every so often you got to revise the OSRP so that when you go to the state programs, you say, here's my new, you know, within a year, da 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 da, da so that there is a certain under underneathness to it. Yeah, to the extent that it actually guides action in town, it'd be good to get our our priorities. Oh, it should. I'm just saying there is this other purpose. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there are things that we've recommended that will cost money in staff time, like uh, the dog bags and um, signage, things like that. Just basic resource protection, like um, grant type items. So if we look at the, the current draft, to the extent we have a current draft of the open space plan, not the, um, sorry, the conservation area plan that we're working on, there's a lot of different kinds of signs. Yeah. A lot of different purposes. And so that's going to take some money to implement. Yeah. Let's just can only think about docs <laughs> for now. Um, I forget. I, I had a suggestion, though, when we're, we're past this. I'm just saying that out loud so I don't forget to say it. I yield. To the okay. I just also just want to mention, Bruce, you got my email with the, my comments just so that when you revise or relook to see if you take a look at what I wrote, just um, yes. OK, awesome. Um, I was wondering if you guys would be interested in taking a site visit walk to sort of get the lay of the land with the dog issue at some point it doesn't have to be long it can be like you know 20 minutes or something um just to for i mean we sit on the computer and we talk about this but to you know see what it looks like on the ground i think no. unless you already are doing that all the time i just i'm um, not okay um i go to i'm happy to do that if you have a particular place you want to go i do stop into amethyst brook um, I frequently look at the parking lot to see how many cars are parked there early in the morning. For example, when I drove up here on Saturday, there were um, at least 20 cars parked there at eight o'clock Saturday morning. And um, but I'm happy to go uh, any place you want to go sometime after the 13th of August. OK, I was thinking specifically about Wentworth because that has sort of arisen as a de facto off-leash dog walking area and right now it's not within our policy that that's allowed so it, there would be by revisiting this and sort of putting forth all of these new policy changes um, or not even policy changes just sort of doubling down or whatever we're going to do that will require some additional enforcement to sort of do some behavioral corrections i guess so just um, it didn't used to be like that, and it's kind of grown into uh, that use. And so it would be interesting, I think, to go there as commissioners just to see, like, the extent to which it's being used, like, maybe talk to some people, maybe experiment with asking people to put their dogs on leash, which, like, a lot of people don't have good <laughs> responses to that. Even Dave Zomek hasn't had good responses to that after introducing himself as the conservation director. So I think sort of understanding, you know, at the resident level, what's going on would help better inform 
our discussions. If we have a site visit, I'm happy to pack a firearm. Oh, geez, Alex. I don't think that's allowed, is it? <laughs> I'm happy to go because you two are much more involved with the dog question. I'm not at all. I don't have a dog. My turtle escaped from my home, so he's out there somewhere. Really? And, uh, <laughs> oh. um, yeah, so, I'm, I'm I'll be, I don't know. Sorry, Alex, go ahead. If you want to set something up that's convenient for you, I'll try my very best to uh, accommodate. Likewise. Okay. I will, I'm away after next week, so that might not be in time for whatever. Well, I don't, it might have to be at the end of August, but. Let's do it now. Well, Alex is in Maine, but. But he has a calendar. Oh, do you set it up now? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you're the one with a more complex calendar. Um. What's the starting day, the first day we could do it? Just I'll tell you the ones I can't. Okay. Um, so I'm open Saturday or Sunday too. So I'll I'll be back on the 26th. So if <laughs> I, I don't know like when the optimal time for, you know, this sort of reconnaissance is, but maybe like eight o'clock. Is that... Okay, so I cannot do it the 27th or 28th, but after that, I'm all yours. All right. Uh, so what, what time do you want to go at an optimal time for dog walkers? Yeah. Or are you fitting it in with your calendar for, no, I, for I mean, California? I have to do both, but yeah, like just when the high highest use is, like is it early or is it after work or both? I don't know. From his description, it sure sounds like it's early. Yeah, I mean, I can do seven. Um, is the I don't want to do it on the 29th because I'm always tired after the concom meeting. <laughs> oh, right. But what is the 26th available for both of you? Yes. Um, I got to switch and look at my... And yeah, the, the first the week 26, of September. Okay. 26 is a Monday. You think that's going to be a big walking day? Um, oh, I, I don't think a Saturday one. or Sunday would be. Okay. Well, um, you said you're I'm, back when? Uh, well, I'm back the 26th, but I'm basically camping every weekend in September. <laughs> so... In I'm, August, you mean? And both. I mean, okay. Weekdays are best for me, but but people walk their dogs in the morning on a weekday, right? I don't know. I don't. Let's try. Dog. Just go look and see. Yep. I just soon not be there at seven. Okay. I mean, what time would you like to? Eight. I can be there at eight. Hey, the twenty sixth. Yep. It's so would, some, would, would, would somebody do me a favor and send out a calendar invite? Yeah, and I'll send a location. Okay. Have you guys been to this conservation no. area before? Oh, well, it's also beautiful. So it'll be a nice, and it has the um, an ag, potential agricultural site, so we can roll in some. All right. <laughs> Where do you go yeah. camping? Um, let's see. Mostly Vermont, but also New Hampshire. We're doing some canoe camping and um kid birthday parties. So um canoe camping. So you pack your gear in a canoe, go down the river. It's a lake. We're, we're starting small because the kids are little, but yeah. It's it's just enough. <laughs> do you ever go to Tully? Tully yeah, we Tully do River. Tully. Yep. Hmm. We have some nice campsites there. We do. We go every year. But we hike in. One of my wife's favorite 
kayak trips is up to Long Lake. Mm hmm We do that one, too. Just long enough for the kids to complain by the end of it, but not the middle. Yeah. There's a wonder once you get to the long lake, just right there as you come out into it on the left, there's a great place for a picnic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so happy to do that. And it's now 12 30. Um, oh, I'm happy to give some time back if we're done with dogs for today. Yeah, just one more thing. Um, I've been, I note like dog signs, the trailheads. Um, so maybe I'll start sending those out. So just like the trustees have some nice ones that are friendly um, and explanatory just to, you know, try and incite some empathy to all the trail users. And um, I think it's just helpful to sort of see what other people are doing, but feel free to do the same because I, I like seeing the different methods of communication. Yeah. Enforcement's going to be a real issue. Um, uh, in, enforcement of any of our policies for the town is is difficult uh, from a policing standpoint. And I use the word policing broadly, not meaning policemen or women. But and then if you ticket somebody or whatnot, uh, you know the the town has very difficult time enforcing its rules and um, um so persuasion is a is a the more likely tool of, of success agree and that's is why there, i'm a signage person there, would yeah. there be a context where some of these issues could be raised in some kind of public forum to really um get the educative side of it going by virtue of reaching out to people, or does that just open up the hornet's nest? I don't, I don't, I don't know if it opens up the hornet's nest, but the, our biggest, I think our biggest problem is a turnover of trail users. There are, there are perpetual trail users, and then there's a turnover of personnel. We have, you know, a lot of students with yeah. dogs who, so, the education is the need for education and persuasion is perpetual. I liked your one about either engaging with UMass and the other colleges about that, getting the information in front of them. Yeah, surprisingly yeah. enough, I, I'll tell you, Dave didn't, um, but he he favored things that the town could do, but I I I, I share too much. Anyways. Um, Okay. Well, well, can I just, just add just that like, in my experience, it's been residents, like just people, not not students, but just people with dogs that live in Amherst or Shutesbury or Pelham that come to the sites to walk. So I know it's tempting to, I mean, that's my experience. It's not been young people. It's just been people that live around here with dogs. Um, and so, you know. Yeah. Anyway. Well, a new coordinated in-your-face blitz of education probably would be needed to kind of go, oh, oh, right. Oh, yeah, I should have been doing that. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's, the there's the communications coordinator, and I don't know if they would even consider this, but having some PSAs about the dog rules, like, because I just assume people don't necessarily know what the rules are, but what they do is do what everybody else is doing. So if they see people with off-leash dogs, they assume it's either allowed or culturally acceptable, and then they do it too, and then you sort of open the faucet on it. Right. So, um, yeah. That's a reason. To me, there's, there's a, I have in my head uh, um, a planner laying out sidewalks, and they go out and they make the sidewalks. And then the people start using the area and cut across, and all of a sudden you have a new pathway. That wasn't a planned sidewalk. So it's like the sidewalk was an L-shaped thing, and the people, you know, cut across. And so the logical thing is to make that a sidewalk where people are actually traveling. And I don't know if it's easier to um if people are naturally 
using a certain area to have dogs off leash if it's easier from an enforcement standpoint to say it's allowed during certain hours like at Amethyst Brook or Mill River but um, rather than coming in and saying can't do it we're likely to get somebody thumbing their nose at us yeah I think, yeah I I think that Wentworth will be a good case study for that question Okay. Okay. Well, let's talk as we walk then when we go there. I want to help oh. solve because I'm not part of the dog thing. So I, I'm trying to be open, really open minded about how to address this one. Yeah. So, what, just going to um, dogs and rivers um, without thinking about Puffer's Pond, um, what is the issue with a dog jumping in the river? I don't know. I was just asking. I assume people take their dogs to cool them off when it's so hot. I would. Yeah. And I used to take my dogs up um, um, Eastman Brook with drains into puffers, and there's nice pools there. I would throw sticks for them. They would. They were retrievers. They would jump in the water and have a great time and get cooled off. I, they, didn't, they didn't pee or poop in the water. It's true, dogs don't oh. tend to poop in the water. And so if they're around the water, they're just as likely to, you know, spray coli. I don't know. I mean, that that's, I live near Atkins Reservoir and it's posted everywhere, no dogs in the water or tributaries. So I mean, someone made that, uh, someone made that a rule. I don't know enough about the interaction. Is the them. reservoir a drinking water reservoir? It is, yeah. Well, that's the reason. And I'm just talking about the Port River as it flows along. Oh, well, they're not prohibited, are they? No, I, I I assume not. I just I was asking just out of curiosity. Yeah. <sighs> By the way, just for, for your edification, uh, Akila Aku Aki, I can't say it. Oh, uh, what's the word that they test for? Um, e. Coli. E. Coli bacteria. No, e. Coli. E. Coli bacteria doesn't hurt you. It's easy to test for. It's a marker and, for other things. It's a marker for other well, things. Well, that's not true, Alex. You can get E. coli in infections. It's about. It's also a matter of ingestion and levels, though. My dad studied E. coli. Uh oh, he's a good old expert in it. Can we get a two-paragraph descriptor that tells us the the, the hard facts? I mean, it, well, it, it can make you sick. That's all. Well. well it's my understanding that acute acute acoli, acoli, whatever that word is, normally I can say it. <clears throat> it's a it's a great way to test a well, which should not have a, a coli in it at all. And that means that there's a problem with a septic tank nearby or somehow polluting groundwater that goes into the well. But every stream, every lake has a has E. coli in it, period. Right, but let the levels are what's of interest, which is why the dredging at Puffer's Pond is probably going to be an important thing coming up. So we have this. We, everybody gets sent one. It's the annual water quality report for 2003. I'm not going to dig it up and read it, but it, it's all about that. <laughs> right, from all the different reservoirs, and whether it's high, low, or over the, the range or any of that. So, yeah. I recommend it as a something to look at. You, I assume this is all on the website too. But we all get sent one of these in the mail. Who? I didn't get one. Who's we? We, the town, members of the town. Every resident gets one. So every, it's to the resident occupant of a particular address. Everyone's supposed to get the water quality report every year. I didn't get that. <laughs> not, okay, we'll look it up. I mean, I. I read it online, but um, yeah, I'm just saying. But they they try to get it out there to people in a different different form, so that I mean, mine's still here. I still look at it occasionally. You know, what about that? So yeah. Anyway, okay. Thanks. All right, I'll send a calendar invite and um, you. enjoy your stay. I'll yeah. Like your Watch out for those uh, seabirds come down of peck on people and poop on people and make noise on yeah. people. No turns around here. Okay. All righty. See you guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Talk to you later.